If you followed SpaceX closely, you already know this. Starship is not just a rocket, it's an experiment in rewriting how launch vehicles are built. Stainless steel instead of carbon composites, rapid iteration instead of decade-long development cycles, and at the heart of it all, the Raptor engine, arguably the most ambitious rocket engine ever put into production. But here's a question that doesn't get asked often enough. Does Starship really need two different Raptor engines? One optimized for sea level and another optimized for the vacuum of space? What if SpaceX could merge them into a single, unified design, a universal Raptor? Today, we're going deep into that idea. We'll break down the physics, the engineering trade-offs, the numbers, and the brutal realities of rocket propulsion. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why unifying the Raptor engines could either be a revolutionary simplification or one of the hardest problems SpaceX has ever attempted. Stick around, because the payoff near the end might completely change how you think about Starship's future. Let's start with what exists today. Starship uses two distinct versions of the Raptor engine. On the Super Heavy booster and the center cluster of Starship itself, SpaceX uses the Raptor Sea Level, often called Raptor SL. On the outer ring of Starship's upper stage, they use Raptor VAC, or at first glance, they look similar. Same fuel, liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Same cycle, full flow staged combustion. Same chamber pressure, roughly 300 bar or about 4350 psi, making Raptor one of the highest pressure rocket engines ever flown. The sea level Raptor has a relatively compact nozzle. It needs to operate efficiently at liftoff where atmospheric pressure is about 14.7 psi. If the nozzle were too wide, exhaust gases would overexpand, flow would separate, and the engine could experience severe instability or even structural damage. The vacuum Raptor, on the other hand, has a massive bell. Its expansion ratio is around 80 to 1, compared to roughly 40 to 1 for the sea level version. That giant nozzle allows the exhaust to expand fully in near zero pressure, maximizing efficiency once Starship reaches orbit. The result? Two engines with the same heart, but very different lungs. In terms of performance, the numbers are telling. A Raptor sea level produces about 510,000 pounds of thrust at liftoff, with a specific impulse of around 330 seconds. Raptor vacuum produces slightly less thrust, roughly 430,000 pounds, but its specific impulse jumps to about 380 seconds in vacuum. That extra efficiency is critical for orbital insertion, on-orbit maneuvers, and deep space missions. So why even think about unifying them? Because complexity is expensive, and SpaceX hates unnecessary complexity. Every different engine variant adds cost, slows production, and complicates logistics. Separate tooling, separate testing campaigns, separate failure modes. And when you're trying to build thousands of engines per year, even small inefficiencies scale into massive problems. Elon Musk has repeatedly said that Starship's success depends on achieving aircraft-like production rates, not dozens of engines per year, hundreds, eventually thousands. Right now, Starship needs 33 sea-level Raptors on Super Heavy, plus three sea-level and three vacuum Raptors on the ship itself. That's already two supply chains for engines that are mostly the same. A unified engine could simplify everything. One design, one production line, one qualification process, one upgrade path. But, and this is the critical part, physics does not care about manufacturing convenience. To understand the challenge, we need to talk about nozzle expansion. A nozzle works by converting thermal energy into directed exhaust velocity. The goal is to expand the exhaust gases until their pressure matches the surrounding environment. At sea level, that environment is dense and unforgiving. In vacuum, it's almost nothing. If you design a nozzle optimized for vacuum and fire it at sea level, the exhaust expands too much too early. Flow eparation occurs. Shock waves form inside the nozzle. In extreme cases, the nozzle can literally tear itself apart. 
Historically, this is why engines like the RS-25 on the space shuttle or the RL-10 were vacuum-optimized and never meant to fire at sea level, and why engines like the F-1 on Saturn V were optimized for sea level and never flown in vacuum-optimized configurations. SpaceX already pushed this boundary with Merlin. The Merlin vacuum engine has a massive nozzle extension, but it's never fired at sea level. Raptor takes this even further. So how could SpaceX possibly unify them? There are a few theoretical paths, each with serious trade-offs. The first idea is extendable or adaptive nozzles. This concept has been studied for decades. The idea is simple. Launch with a compact nozzle suitable for sea level, then extend it once you're in thinner atmosphere or vacuum. NASA tested extendable nozzles in the past, including variants of the RL-10. They work, but they add mass, mechanical complexity, and new failure points. Moving parts in rocket engines are already a nightmare. Moving parts exposed to cryogenic temperatures, vibration, and acoustic loads are even worse. For Starship, mass is everything. Adding even a few hundred pounds per engine could wipe out the efficiency gains of unification. And remember, Starship is designed for rapid reuse. Any mechanism that extends and retracts repeatedly over dozens of flights must be insanely reliable. So while extendable nozzles are possible, they clash with SpaceX's philosophy of simplicity and robustness. The second idea is aerospace-grade compromise geometry. Instead of optimizing for either sea level or vacuum, you design a nozzle that's good enough at both. Not perfect at either, but acceptable across the entire flight envelope. This is where the numbers get uncomfortable. A compromise nozzle would likely have an expansion ratio somewhere between 50 to 1 and 60 to 1. That would reduce sea level thrust slightly due to overexpansion and reduce vacuum efficiency compared to Raptor Vac. Even a 3 to 5% drop in efficiency could translate to thousands of pounds of lost payload to orbit. For a Mars mission, that could mean fewer tons of cargo, fewer propellant margins, or fewer landing options. SpaceX tends to accept inefficiencies if they enable massive cost reductions, but this trade-off is brutal. Is saving manufacturing complexity worth losing performance on every single flight? That's an open question. The third and most intriguing idea involves advanced flow control and chamber pressure modulation. Because Raptor already operates at extremely high chamber pressures, around 300 bar, it has more flexibility than almost any engine before it. In theory, by dynamically adjusting chamber pressure, mixture ratio, and turbine flow, SpaceX could partially compensate for suboptimal nozzle expansion at different altitudes. This wouldn't eliminate the fundamental physics, but it could soften the penalties. Think of it like an automatic transmission versus a fixed gear. You're still bound by the engine's limits, but you can operate closer to optimal conditions more of the time. SpaceX already does something similar with throttling and engine gimbling. Extending that logic further isn't impossible, but it would push software, controls, and materials to their limits. And here's the cliffhanger. This approach only works because Raptor uses full-flow staged combustion. Full-flow staged combustion is what sets Raptor apart from almost every other operational engine. In Raptor, both the fuel and the oxidizer are fully gasified before entering the main combustion chamber. That means lower turbine temperatures, higher efficiency, and better durability. It also means unprecedented control authority over the engine's internal flows. This could be the key that allows SpaceX to blur the line between sea level and vacuum operation in ways older engines never could. But there's a catch. Higher control authority also means more complexity in software and testing, and complexity is the enemy of rapid reuse. Now let's talk about what SpaceX is actually doing, not just what's theoretically possible. Recent Starship flights show a clear trend, simplification and standardization. Engines are being iterated rapidly, plumbing is being cleaned up, and components are being unified wherever possible. 
SpaceX has already reduced the number of unique Raptor variants compared to earlier prototypes, and Elon Musk has hinted more than once that long-term, the goal is fewer engine versions, not more. But does that mean a single universal Raptor? Probably not in the near term. In the short and medium term, the performance advantages of dedicated sea level and vacuum engines are simply too valuable. When every pound to orbit matters, specialization wins. However, and this is important, once Starship reaches operational maturity, the equation changes. When launch costs drop below a certain threshold, performance becomes less critical than reliability, manufacturability, and turnaround time. At that point, a universal Raptor that's slightly less efficient but dramatically simpler could make sense. And that's the real takeaway. Unifying Starship's Raptors isn't just an engineering problem. It's a strategic decision about what matters most at different stages of development. Early on, maximize performance, push physics, accept complexity. Later, reduce cost, increase cadence, simplify everything. If SpaceX ever builds a universal Raptor, it won't be because it's easy, it'll be because Starship has already won. And that brings us to the big question for you. Would you rather have maximum performance or maximum scalability? Drop your thoughts in the comments because I read every single one. If you found this breakdown valuable, hit the like button. It massively helps the algorithm understand that this is content worth sharing. Subscribe if you want deep, no-nonsense spaceflight analysis like this every week. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, where we post daily updates, visuals, and behind-the-scenes insights from the world of spaceflight. The future of Starship isn't just about reaching orbit, it's about making spaceflight routine. And the engines at its core may determine how fast we get there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.